Hey there, Jeff Manchester from Isotope. In this video, we're continuing our series looking at hidden or lesser known workflows in our plugins. We've already covered Ozone and Nectar, so please go back and watch those videos if you haven't. And today, we're gonna cover RX Pro for music. Whether you're working on a podcast or music production or frankly, any audio project, RX is there to help you fix the unfixable and solve the unsolvable. And in this video, I wanna help you use the program a little bit more efficiently with workflows that I guarantee you probably don't even know are in the tool. Now, if you're completely starting from scratch with RX, there's two videos that I think you should watch. The first is getting started with RX Pro for music, and the second is understanding the spectrogram. So go watch those if you haven't yet delved into the world of RX. And if you wanna follow along with a copy of RX Pro for music in front of you, which I think will help with the educational experience, head to isotope.com and download a free trial of Music Production Suite Pro. Now, without further ado, let's get started. The spectrogram is the visual canvas for which RX is famous. It allows you to see and then remove or attenuate, that just means make quieter, all kinds of problems. I'm gonna show you a trick though that allows you to really see the low end information in the spectrogram where problems like wind bursts or plosives or camera handling can often live. Let me show you how it works. If you want even more visual real estate in the low end, right click on the Y axis of the frequency scale to change the frequency range display to extended log from MEL. Now I can see way more of my low end. Notice when I flip back, we see values below 100 Hertz are not easily represented and we can't see too much down there. When I flip back to extended log, so much more information is visible below 100 Hertz and we see Hertz increments from 5, 10, 20, 30, 50, 70, and 100. Almost like we're shining a black light on the low end. And here's a bonus tip. Typing in values into the selection and view boxes will allow you to achieve specific zoom levels or selection ranges. Just double click on the Y or X axis to return the views to default. Sometimes problems that you're trying to get rid of seem just out of reach in the spectrogram. Well, with this feature, I'm gonna show you how to go in between the molecules of sound, so to speak, to really get after things that you thought were impossible to fix. In the spectrogram, you can press Command or Control and then scroll up or down with your mouse or trackpad to zoom in across the time domain. And you can also press Option or Alt and then up or down scroll to scroll in and around the frequency domain. Now you can get between the harmonics in the spectrogram for more detailed editing. Many of the modules within the standalone editor of RX can actually be used outside of the application window in your favorite DAW as a plugin. But there's a common misconception that the plugins will incur latency. Well, did you know you can run voice denoise in the digital audio workstation with zero latency? In your DAW of choice, you can restore problematic vocal or production recordings in real time with RX Pro for Music's voice denoise audio plugin. Improving on the earlier dialogue denoise, the zero latency voice denoise is the most powerful denoiser focused on dialogue and song vocal treatment. Voice Denoise has an adaptive mode too that can adjust to changing noise floors in real time, making it ideal for dialogue stem, set it and forget it denoising. By now you've seen just how much control you have navigating the spectrogram. But did you know there's a hidden menu that allows you to change the look, the color, and the way that audio information is represented in the spectrogram? You're probably aware of the main preferences menu, which you can call up by pressing command or control and comma. But by pressing shift command comma, you can call up an entirely different menu that allows you to alter aspects of the spectrogram's color map and type of spectrogram calculation algorithm. Here you can change the color map, which might help you see problems a little better. You can also change the spectrogram calculation type, which has implications for the visualization of audio. As you move between algorithms, you might find that one works better than another for the problems that you're working on. You can even sharpen the spectrogram with the reassignment box. Yeah. 
Sometimes you want to capture just the noise profile of something so that you can later subtract it from that sound source. Let's say you're trying to get rid of HVAC sound on a vocal or a sound effect. But you might not have a clean one to two seconds of just noise that you need to pull from for a learning pass. If that ever happens, I'm going to show you a hidden feature now called invert selection to make this task very easy. So imagine you have a sample you'd like to extract a fingerprint of noise from, and you don't have prolonged noise for a learn pass with a module like spectral denoise or voice denoise. I'll start by selecting the fundamental frequency here with the magic wand tool. With the fundamental selected, I can press shift and click again to have RX mathematically estimate where the rest of the harmonics are and select them as well. Now by pressing shift command or control and I, I can invert my selection completely. This means we flip the selection preferences, targeting everything that was unselected earlier. Now we're largely omitting the harmonics and focusing on just the noise profile. And from here, I can refine my selection with some manual moves, perhaps using some hidden feature controls I showed you earlier, like the option, alt, up and down scroll to select and build out a more complete noise profile. And when I'm ready, I can input this profile into a module like spectral denoise so it can learn and then subtract the noise from the tonal, useful, sonic information. This next hidden feature is probably most useful for people doing repetitive tasks like removing um, kick drum squeak or environmental noise that's interfering in a repetitive way with your all important audio. Instant Process is designed for people who undertake repetitive tasks that happen over and over across a performance. Take this kick drum squeak. Now instead of opening up a tool like Spectral Repairs Attenuate, using one of the tools down here like a brush tool and then selecting and then pressing render over and over and over, why not turn on Instant Process? Then find Attenuate and now you can make a selection and when you let go of your mouse, your processing is rendered. You can control a number of other popular modules here too, like Declick, Fade, Gain and Replace, which is another tab alongside the Attenuate tab in the Spectral Repair module. Now the module chain in RX Pro for Music is a massive time saver for people who work on repetitive audio problems that either come from the same singer or the same sound source. But what people don't realize is that you have control right down to the frequency range for how you want to process the audio in the module chain. Once you've set up your module chain, you'll see an icon down here. This will allow you to target the processing of the module to only affect the frequency range of your choosing. This can help prevent over-processing your samples by focusing the processing only where it needs to be. The export menu in RX offers a variety of options for people looking to export their audio into different formats. But for those exporting MP3s, there's some helpful options to protect against codec clipping when encoding to lossy formats. Pressing Command or Control and E will call up the menu. Now from here, you'll see the MP3 option. In addition to the bitrate and bitrate control options, you can also prevent clipping. There's two options here. You can use normalize, which if the signal surges above one dB true peak, it'll be attenuated to zero dB true peak, or you can choose limiter. This will limit encoding surges with a zero dB true peak ceiling. Many people repair stereo tracks in RX, and when you do that, you'll see the left and right channel sandwiched on top of each other. But some people want a bit more screen space to really see the full spectrum of information, while also editing things simultaneously across left and right channels. Let me show you how to get the best of both worlds here. Here, you can see we have a stereo track loaded into the application window. And as you can see, by processing one channel, my moves are carried over to the other channel but we don't have a lot of screen real estate to work with because they're scaled in such a way to allow us to see both channels at the same time. We can fix that by pressing Shift, Command or Control and C and watch what happens. We now have a full view of stereo information. Even though it looks like we're only viewing one channel, it's actually both left and right channels in a composite view. 
and when you make processing decisions, they're reflected across the left and right channels. The final hidden feature concerns the playback head in the RX standalone editor. You can actually control its movement and behavior in very helpful ways. Let's say you're carefully reviewing an audio document and you don't want to miss a pop or click. Head to view, then switch on continuous. Now when you play the audio back, you'll see the audio scroll past fluidly. There's another hidden feature regarding the playhead though. Let's say you're reviewing a particular sequence in the application window, and you need to listen back a few times to that moment in the audio, but you don't want to keep returning the playhead with your mouse to a starting point, like this. Instead, head to Transport, then Disable Playhead Follows Playback. Now we can set our playhead here, play some audio, and when we stop Transport, the playhead will return to wherever we placed this yellow line. Thank you so much for watching. I hope these now apparent features will be really helpful for you in your next audio project. What tools should we feature next in this series? And do you have any dream feature requests for RX in the future? Please let us know in the comments. And as ever, head to isotope.com to get more free educational content on the Learn section of the website and to download a free trial of Music Production Suite Pro. Take care.